Hey, how's it going everybody? This is Lee. I'm a technical specialist for Autodesk and I want to go over something cool that I've been working with with MASH that I thought was fun and useful. So let's take a look at how this works. Um, I want to use something interesting for a strength map. Uh, I think one of this I think this example shows how well integrated MASH and the motion graphics tools are inside of Maya and hopefully we'll give you some other ideas on how to use them. So I'm going to use um, a simple fluid texture. This is something that's been around in Maya for quite a while, but uh, this is just kind of a fun way of using it. I'm um, going to go, let's just assign a separate Lambert to this plane. So just got a simple plane, and I'm going to assign a fluid 2D texture to it. And if you haven't worked with these before, it essentially gives you um, a fluid container, and I'm just going to set this up so that it's nice and uniform mostly for illustration purposes. So the first thing you'll notice is that it's black by default and you get this container. Well the container doesn't have anything in it and I want to install or, or emit something into it which is just fluids. That's how it works. So I'm going to go to my fluid container. I'm going to go to my add edit contents and I'm going to emit. Now there's a bunch of parameters here you can set this to but we can apply those or, or change those after the fact. So I'm just going to stick with the defaults and as soon as I hit the 6 key, which takes us into textured mode, and hit play, you can see that I get, indeed, some fluid emitted into my container, or my volume, and that, in turn, drives the texture that's been applied to my plane. So that's kind of cool. So what's great is any texture that we want to use to uh, put on a, a surface, we can use to drive a motion graphics network. So let's see how we can do that. Uh, the first thing I want to do is make sure I get a, enough density or, or um, fluid emission being displayed in my container. So I'm going to go to my attribute editor for that, go to my content details and set my density to something a little bit higher. We'll just go really high and set it to 5. And to slow down this buoyancy, I'm going to set this down to like uh, half, maybe even lower than that, just so it doesn't traverse too quickly out into my container. So that'll work for this uh, this simple example. So I've got a couple of planes. I'm just gonna, or a couple of cubes that I'll use to start off things with. Uh, start things off with. Let's go to my cube and just create a simple mesh network. Let those guys spit out in the scene. And I'm going to just do a. We'll make a simple grid. So we'll go down to the grid settings. We'll expand this out so that it sort of fits inside my fluid container. We can make these guys a little bit bigger if we want to. Again, just for illustrative purposes, uh, this will make a lot of sense. And let's increase the number of points that go into my mesh network. So I get some little cubes. And then so that I can rotate this, again, just to kind of keep everything consistent, we'll just add a transform node. I'll go to the controller null, null just to create a simple null controller. I'll hold my J key down and snap that into position. And that's all I need to do. So when I hit emit now you can see that that sort of overlaps but the problem is I'm not really driving anything so let's actually do that let's create some sort of animation or some sort of uh, value that we can change so we'll just go to our offset node and let's rotate our cubes 90 degrees um, and let's make it a little more dramatic let's make it 180 so that's great we've rotated all our cubes 180 degrees and what I want to do is go down to my strength section and this is where all these little values are assigned uh, or these values live that drive the overall value or strength of the, of the offset in this case that I've applied or it could be any mesh node that I've applied so this is super simple all I have to do is go to my hypershade I've got my textures here uh, we'll go back to our mesh network and go to our offset and down in that strength section I want to drive this with this strength map so I'll just take my 2D texture my 2D flu texture and drop it into my strength map section and just like that when I hit play I get these little rotation values that are driven by the black and white values or the white values in this case they turn my animation and drive it so that's pretty slick um, we can take this a step further if we go to my uh, uh, my repro node we can just drag and drop say this orange cube in here and in my mash waiter we can drop on an ID node and now that of course by default sets that to be 0 and 1 but we can use that same strength map inside our ID node and we'll just open up our hypershade one more time drag and drop that texture into the strength map 
And just like that, we get orange cubes where the white values are. And then we can take that a step further. We can go, we, we can drive anything we want with this texture map, which is really slick. So let's take a look at another example. Okay, in this case, what we can do is use a 3D fluid texture. So I'm going to take my surface here and I'm going to right mouse button click on it and we'll just do the same thing. We'll assign a Lambert because this doesn't really matter. Ultimately, we're just setting up the uh, locations for all of the animation that we're going to set up. We'll click on the map button and instead of a fluid 2D, we're going to click on fluid 3D. So this takes a little more setup because uh, we've, we've got to resize this in 3D space and I want to keep my voxel square just for consistency's sake and I know this is going to be about 85, I'll set this to 15 and that'll work for my sizing and then I'll set this base resolution to be about, uh, I don't know, 160. And when I hit rewind you can see that resizes the resolution of the fluid container and I'm just, just going to make sure that encompasses my entire word here. So that looks pretty good. We don't even need this to be quite 75. Let's try 65. And so from here, let's emit something into this because uh, we, we still, just like with the last example, we don't have any fluid emission being uh, pushed into the container. So I'm just going to create a, a simple plane and I'm going to manually scale this guy up so that it sits right at the bottom of the container and I'm going to use a surface emitter for my fluid. So we'll resize this guy about right there. It doesn't have to be perfect. But from here, I'll just select my fluid container and then select my surface and go down to my add edit contents and we'll emit from this object. Uh, we'll admit this to be surface. I'll set this up to be 5. We'll make it nice and dense. And when I hit apply and close and hit play, I get lots of fluid emitted into my, my container, which is great. So now let's set up the mesh network again. I'm going to grab my little cube that I've got here. We'll go to create mesh network. And super simple, we'll just go to the distribute section, go down to the mesh area, and I'm going to drag and drop my type mesh in there. And just to make this quick, we'll set this up to be a voxel grid and I'll reduce the size a bit there we go something like that and right now we're using shell only I actually want this to be fill only and what that does is if I hide my surface let's actually make this a little bit bigger eh, somewhere around in there maybe fill and shell that'll work um, that gives me a nice dense bunch of uh, pixels to drive and in this case instead of the ID node let's use visibility and I'm just gonna do exactly like we did in the 2d example we'll take that texture and drag and drop it into the strength map and now when I hit play we get our fluid as well as the visibility from our surface now in this case obviously we want to get rid of that fluid so I'm just gonna go to the show menu and hide my fluids and now I get my fluid driving the location of my voxel grid and this could be used for all kinds of things obviously it would be really cool to uh, uh, animate the texture it's in this case forming the shape of our logo or our, our geometry but this could be used to drive rotation randomization anything that you want and that is just a really I think a, a fun example because it's being driven by dynamics um, it's a little more fluid and natural looking. Uh, the randomness is, is guided, but not too exact. And of course, you can go back and play with your heart's content to, with all of the fluid settings and all of the fluid um, values that drive the animation of the fluid itself. Matter of fact, I was thinking maybe I could change uh, how this, I think it's cached out at this point. So it's not going to, let's see, am I going to get my fluid? Yeah, so it is going to be constrained. So we could uh, we could drive the location of that fluid wherever that plane goes and you can see that that uh, continues to fly out. We're not really seeing the fluids right now so it's kind of hard to kind of predict where that's going to go but you can see that as I move this around as it's as it plays back it's going to have an effect on, on the location of those cubes based on the position of our 
logo. So that's just a cool look at uh, some stuff I've been playing with, with uh, motion graphics and MASH network and just showing how well integrated these tools are with the rest of Maya and how you can pretty much pull from all of the cool things that Maya can do to drive your motion graphics network. Hope you enjoy that. Let me know what you think. Thanks.